After a decade of LGBT cinema trying to both shock and placate audiences following the AIDS crisis, Brokeback Mountain was a real nodal point. Suddenly, someone somewhere realised that there was money to be made from telling the stories of queer people on screen. And they were a bit of an awards magnet too. The easiest first step was the biopic. A whole host of historical figures had just been waiting in the wings for the moment to be right and, post Brokeback, that moment was now. Artists, pioneers and heroes came under the spotlight and the Hollywood A-list were all wanting their chance at Oscar glory. Lily Elb, the first trans woman to undergo a sex change, was portrayed by Eddie Redmayne. Flamboyant but closeted piano superstar Liberace was portrayed by Michael Douglas. Oscar Wilde by Rupert Everett. Yves Saint Laurent by Gaspard Ulliel. Colette by Kieran Knightley. Jared Leto and Matthew McConaughey both won Oscars for their roles in Dallas Buyers Club, which depicted the true story of a con artist who smuggled unapproved AIDS medication into the UK. Emma Stone played tennis icon Billie Jean King in Battle of the Sexes, while Rami Malek won an Oscar for playing Queen frontman Freddie Mercury in Bohemian Rhapsody. Melissa McCarthy played lesbian literary forger Lee Israel in Can You Ever Forgive Me? Meanwhile, World War II codebreaker Alan Turing was given the big screen treatment in The Imitation Game, with Benedict Cumberbatch Oscar nominated for his performance as a tortured genius whose sexuality was considered more important than his considerable achievements by authorities. You've got more secrets than the best of them. What if I don't fancy her in that way? Can't tell anyone, Owen. It's illegal. Political movies also found their place on screen in movies like Prayers for Bobby, The Normal Heart and Pride, a British film that depicts the true story of the unlikely alliance between a gay and lesbian group from London and a town of striking miners in 1980s rural Wales. everybody. Name me uh, the group you represent, in this case. Lesbians and gays support the miners. When you're in a battle against an enemy so much bigger, so much stronger than you, but to find out you had a friend you never knew existed, well, that's the best feeling in the world. What I was told about lesbians can't be true, can they? You're all vegetarians. <laughs> Probably the biggest LGBT history achievement in cinema came in the form of Milk, the biopic of the USA's first openly gay politician, Harvey Milk who explored his rise to power in San Francisco and subsequent assassination. The film saw Oscar nominations aplenty for its stars and director Gus Van Sant, with Sean Penn becoming the first person to win Best Actor for playing an explicitly gay part. You are scared of girls. Oh! You'll be the first openly gay man elected to major office. It's like you're part of the machine now. A society can't exist without the family. We're not against that. Can two men reproduce? No, but God knows we keep trying. Following the success of Milk, Gay director Roland Emmerich's decision to make a movie about the Stonewall riots should have been a recipe for success, but unfortunately he made a major misfire. In deciding to portray the entire film through the eyes of a white, cisgender gay man, of whom there were very few involved, and even daring to change history and have him throw the first stones, which are widely known to have been thrown by three black drag queens, including trans legend Marsha P. Johnson, this whitewashing of queer history was universally panned by critics and the LGBT community alike, with the film becoming a universal failure. While we are still waiting for a gay, lesbian or transgender main character in a Hollywood blockbuster, bisexual women have taken centre stage in films like The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo and Atomic Blonde. Meanwhile, comedy is still struggling with LGBT depictions. You only have to watch the painfully offensive Bruno to see how ridiculing LGBT people hasn't yet become taboo. Since then, LGBT comedies like GBF and Hurricane Bianca have been very much geared toward niche gay audiences, with only I Love You Philip Morris managing to place gay characters front and centre in a mainstream comedy. However, 2018's Love, Simon saw the very first teen gay comedy arrive on the big screen. Following the tried and tested John Hughes style formula, this heartwarming and genuinely funny feel-good rom-com brought a gay romantic lead to teenagers all over the world for the first time. My name's Simon. For the most part, my life is totally normal. I have a family that I actually like, and there's my friends. We do everything friends do. We drink way too much diced coffee, walk gorging on carbs. So, I'm just like you, except I have one huge ass secret. Hey, I like your, your boots. I said I like your, your boots. 
Goodbye. Nobody knows I'm gay. <sighs> But the rest of the world were actually streets ahead of Hollywood. Major LGBT releases had trickled out from all over the world, but nowhere was this more prevalent than in France. Lesbian romance Blue is the Warmest Colour won the Palme d'Or at Cannes, while AIDS drama 120 BPM won the Grand Prix four years later. The establishment of the Queer Palm also saw the festival awarding LGBT stories from all over the world, including French gay thriller Stranger by the Lake, other widely acclaimed French LGBT releases include gender drama Tomboy, home invasion thriller Eastern Boys, real-time romance Theo and Hugo, theatrical biopic Reinventing Marvin, and sex work drama Sauvage. Elsewhere in Europe, Spain released trans musical 20 centimeters, on lot of our plastic surgery thriller The Skin I Live In, and lesbian erotic romance Room in Rome. LGBT sports people were explored in Polish competitive swimming romantic drama Floating Skyscrapers and football in Swiss Mario and British The Pass. Gay teen coming of age stories were depicted in acclaimed movies One Kiss from Italy, Handsome Devil from Ireland and North Sea Texas from Belgium. British romance Weekend captured the hearts of countless moviegoers. Other major British successes included Postcards from London, Disobedience, and steamy sheep farming, yes, sheep farming, God's own country. Germany released trans teen romance Romeos, but also probably the most popular gay romance of all, Freefall, which follows two police officers who fall desperately in love with each other, despite one being already married to a woman. So haben wir den nicht erzogen, Mark. Away from Europe, Brazil released XXY, The Way He Looks, and Taekwondo, while Chilean A Fantastic Woman became the first LGBT film to win Best Foreign Language Film at the Oscars. South African Beauty and The Wound were both widely acclaimed, while Kenyan Rafiki's success at international festivals forced its home country to temporarily change its laws on LGBT film releasing to give it eligibility for the Oscars. Australia released Holding the Man, South Korea The Handmaiden, and Israel, Eyes Wide Open, In Between, as well as the progressive films of Eitan Fox, Walk on Water, The Bubble, and Yossi, all set in and around Tel Aviv. Another auteur to rise to the fore was French-Canadian director Xavier Dolan, whose first film, I Killed My Mother, catapulted him to stardom at the age of 20, which he wrote, directed, and starred in, in this semi-autobiographical account of his tempestuous relationship with his mother. Hubert, si jamais ça va vraiment mal à la maison, tu peux venir euh, habiter ici les fins de semaine. Il me disait tout quand il était petit. Maintenant, je ne peux même plus ouvrir la bouche. Ça que si, ça que ça, si jamais correct, il y a toujours quelque chose. Je pense que je suis faite pour pas avoir de mère. Peut-être que ta mère est faite pour pas avoir de fils. Subsequent movies, Heartbeat, Queer Palm winning Lawrence Anyways, My Personal Favorite, Toe at the Farm, and César Best Director winning It's Only the End of the World, have cemented the young Quebecois director as probably the strongest LGBT voice in cinema right now. Meanwhile in America, indie cinema created scores of LGBT releases, with many of them finding homes on streaming platforms like Netflix. Tangerine depicts a trans sex worker in a hilarious indie revenge comedy, which had all been shot on an iPhone. Other significant independent American releases have included Short Bus, Pariah, Albert Nobbs, Concussion, Love is Strange, Boy Meets Girl, Appropriate Behaviour, Free Held, Other People, True Porn Thriller King Cobra, Closet Monster, Beach Rats, Gay Conversion Therapy Dramas I Am Michael, The Miseducation of Cameron Post, and Boy Erased, 1985, and Beginners, which saw Christopher Plummer win an Oscar for playing a man who only discovers his sexuality after he has retired. And then, of course, are the big Oscar success stories. In Tom Ford's directorial debut, Colin Firth stars in A Single Man, about the last day in a gay man's life as he prepares himself to commit suicide. Annette Bening and Julianne Moore starred in The Kids Are Alright, a family drama in which a lesbian couple's children try to begin a relationship with their sperm donor father. Olivia Colman won an Oscar for playing British Queen Anne in Yorgos Lanthimos's comedic reimagining of her probably lesbian relationship with her two favourites at court, played by Rachel Weisz and Emma Stone. My dear friend, how good to see you've returned from hell. I'm sure you shall pass through it one day. 
Kate Blanchett and Rooney Mara were both nominated for their performances in Luscious Period Romance Carol by Todd Haynes. Timothy Chalamet was catapulted to stardom after starring opposite Armie Hammer in Luca Guadagnino's Call Me By Your Name, a coming-of-age drama set in 1980s Italy about a young man who explores his sexuality with his academic father's hunky student protégé. Call me by your name and I'll call you by mine. But the biggest success came from Barry Jenkins's Moonlight an episodic drama that depicts three periods in a young gay man's life as he discovers, understands and explores his sexual identity. A subtle and beautiful commentary on what it means to be black, young and gay, the film surprised the film community by taking home the best picture prize in 2017, the very first LGBT picture to do so. Looking at me like that, bro. Oh, what, man? Come on, you just drove down here? Yeah. With Moonlight proving that films that show queer stories could be both popular and recognized by their peers, the glass ceiling was permanently broken for LGBT stories on screen. 50 years exactly from the decriminalisation of homosexuality in the UK and a gay film was recognised as the best movie of its year and given the highest accolade that Hollywood can bestow on one of its movies. And two years later, in 2019, 50 years exactly since the Stonewall riots and five of the eight Best Picture nominees feature at least one prominent LGBT character. And that brings to a close The Pink Lens's history of LGBT cinema. With movies coming from all over the world, the last 50 years have seen a whole wealth of LGBT content appearing on our screens. The work of Kenneth Anger, John Waters, Raina Werner Fassbinder, Pier Paolo Pasolini, Gus Van Sant, Derek Jarman, Pedro Almodovar, Greg Araki. Bruce LeBruce, John Cameron Mitchell and Xavier Dolan have inspired generations of cinema goers. From the blackmailing of gay men in Victor in the 60s, we saw the depictions of a gay community in Boys of the Band in the 70s, which was counteracted by the public's gay panic in cruising in the 1980s. The AIDS crisis saw fear and compassion alike in Philadelphia in the 90s, before the joy of campness overshadowed this in the adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Brokeback Mountain brought LGBT romance to multiplex cinemas in the noughties, with Carol and Call Me By Your Name hot on its heels. Milk and Pride brought LGBT politics to the big screen, and Moonlight finally went the distance, the first LGBT movie to triumph at the Oscars. What will happen over the next few years with LGBT cinema? Well, whatever it is, The Pink Lens will be with you. So make sure that you visit www.thepinklens.com for all your news, reviews and features about LGBT cinema. Thanks for watching and until next time, folks.